okay, we have a function and we want to know uh, where it's concave up, where it's concave down, and also what is the inflection point. So to do all of this, we have to find the second derivative and set it equal to zero. So solution. So we'll start first by rewriting this in a convenient way. You could just take the derivative now, but it becomes a huge mess. So let's rewrite it. So f of x is equal to x over x to the 1 half, right? Thinking of the square root of x is x to the 1 half, plus 7 over x to the 1 half. This is equal to x. Well, there's a 1 here, so 1 minus 1 half, you get 1 half. You subtract the exponents, plus 7, and then you bring this upstairs. So you get x to the negative 1 half. All right, now we're in a good place, and we can take derivatives. So f prime of x is equal to, let's see, we'll take this 1 half and bring it downstairs. So 1 half x to the negative 1 half, right? 1 minus 1 half is negative 1 half. Here we, we will bring this downstairs and we get minus 7 halves x to the, well, negative 1 half minus 1 is negative 3 halves. So that's the first derivative. Right, now we have to find the second derivative. So f double prime of x, again, we take this number and we bring it down. So we get negative one fourth x and then negative one half minus one is negative three halves. Here we bring this one down. So we're going to end up multiplying three halves times seven halves. So it looks like we get plus, right, there's two negatives, 21 over four x to the negative five halves because negative 3 halves minus 1 is negative 5 halves. All right, and we set this equal to 0. So there's a trick here. Um, the trick is to factor out x to the smallest power. So uh, negative 5 halves is smaller than negative 3 halves. So we'll take that out. So f double prime of x. Let's also take out the negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth x to the negative 5 over 2. So that's what we're going to factor out. Now, now what goes here? I actually don't know yet. I haven't, uh, I haven't done it. So let's see if we can figure it out. Well, the negative 1 fourth, that's already there, so no issue. Here we have an x to the negative 3 halves. We have an x to the negative 5 halves, so we need an x to the 2 halves, right? Because when you multiply, you add the exponents. 2 halves plus net plus negative 5 halves is negative 3 halves. And then here, looks like we, ha we have a plus here. So we have a minus here, so we have to have a minus here, So because minus and minus is plus. And looks like just 21. Wow, cleaned up really nice. And this is equal to 0. Let's clean it up again. So f double prime of x. I'll write the negative on the outside. This is going to be x minus 21 right, two over two is one, and then let's bring this downstairs, so we get x to the five halves, and let's not forget about the four, it's also down there as well. And we set this equal to zero. So, uh, kind of a delicate problem. This problem becomes much harder if you don't do this first, it becomes a huge mess. Okay, so we have a fraction, it's equal to zero, there's no common factors, so we can automatically set the numerator equal to zero. And so we get x equals 21. So this is, might lead to an inflection point, right? We don't know. We have to check. The next step is to draw a number line. And we'll plot the 21. Now, we also need to be aware of the domain in this problem. In this problem, x can't be 0 because you have the square root of x on the bottom. And also, x has to be greater than or equal to 0. You can't take, like, the square root of negative 1, right? So uh, we want x to be greater than zero in this problem, right, because of this. So we'll put a zero here, and we know for sure we're going to have a parentheses here. So now we will pick test points, and we'll plug the test points into the second derivative. So let's do that. 
So let's pick any number we want between 0 and 21. How about 1? So f double prime of 1. Let's equal to negative, and then you get, let's see, 1 minus 21 is negative 20. And then here we get 4 times 1 to the 5 halves. So we get 20 over 4, right? Negative and negative is positive. So we get 5, so it's positive. So we know it's concave up here, right? It's concave up. Let's pick a number bigger than 21. How about 22? So f double prime of 22. 22 minus 21 is 1. So you just get negative 1 over 4 times 22 to the 5 halves. And that's less than 0. So we know it's concave down here. All right, ready to write the answers down. It looks like we will have an inflection point. So let's actually figure out what the inflection point is. To find inflection points, you go back to the original function. So you just take this number here and you plug it back into the original, back into f. So f of 21, that's equal to 21 plus 7 over the square root of 21. So that's 28 over the square root of 21. And I guess you could rationalize here, but let's, let's not bother. So the inflection point, it's a point, so it's important to write the x and the y. It's 21 comma 28 over the square root of 21. And the reason we have an inflection point is because the concavity changes, right? It goes from up to down. All right, and it's con up on the interval 0 to 21. That's an interval. And it's con down, right? Concave down. That should be two words. Uh, on the interval 21 to infinity. So to recap, whenever you have to find out if something is concave up, down, and an inflection point, you start by taking the second derivative. You do not use critical numbers at all. So we, we never set the first derivative equal to zero. It's all about the second derivative. So you take that second derivative, you set it equal to zero, you plot your, your solutions. If you have any vertical asymptotes, you plot those as well. Um, any issues with the domain like we had here, uh, you had to put the zero there as well. Then you pick test points, you plug them into the second derivative. If the second derivative is positive, it's concave up. If the second derivative is negative, it's concave down. When the concavity changes from up to down or down to up, you have an inflection point. So you take this number and plug it back into the original. I hope this helps.